I'm sure if you're a gamer, you've probably heard the news, unless you've been pretty much living under a rock. Microsoft has followed suit with closing and reassigning devs from four studios part of Bethesda. With most gamers and media showing their frustrations over this update, I think it's important for us to discuss the overall impact that this has, not just on Microsoft, but the trends that we can see for the future of gaming as a whole. Has Microsoft lost the trust of its fan base? Does this foreshadow the grim future we should expect going forward? Is there a silver line that we should be aware of going to the future? Let's get frustrated on Twitter, get our tomatoes ready, and jump right into this. So I'm sure you've all heard the news, but I'll give a brief summary of what happened so you can kind of feel like you're caught up in this situation. Early morning on May 7th, Microsoft's Mad Booty, which I'm really surprised he hasn't lost his job yet, has sent out an email to their devs clarifying their plan going forward with readjusting their current Bethesda studios. He stated that Arcane Austin, the developers of Redfall, would be closed while some devs will be pushed into other studios. Alpha Dog Studios, which was a mobile game studio behind Mighty Doom, will be closed completely. Roundhouse Games, which was a support studio, will combine with ZeniMax Online Studios to work on Elder Scrolls Online. And I think worst of all, the thing that really kicks us all straight in the nuts, Tango Gameworks, the devs behind Hi-Fi Rush, will be closed completely. So based on this information alone, it was a mixture of disappointment and anger. I'll be honest with you, I'm not really surprised that this actually occurred in this current era of gaming that we're really witness it. Ever since COVID, the gaming sales have been skyrocketing. People have been playing a lot more games more than often than not, mainly because we're really stuck at home doing nothing. And because of this, investments into these game studios have been going up and up and up. And then once COVID kind of was starting to dissipate a little bit, these games that we are enjoying in this new era of these consoles has started to become a lot more expensive. To reach the demand of what people always like to play, these massive open worlds with fidelity that make you see the peach fuzz on people's faces, it's quite expensive. Some game budgets will reach the levels of movie productions and even more. Halo Infinite was near a billion dollars in investment. Final Fantasy was the level of an entire movie series. And all of a sudden, when game devs were trying to meet the levels of demand of these games, they needed to pump out production. And when they couldn't reach the sale numbers to even out what they had before, this led to massive amounts of layoffs. And these layoffs were not just from smaller studios, they ranged to everybody, from EA to Microsoft, Sony, Ubisoft, the Embracer Group, Bungie, Amazon, Take-Two Interactive. I mean, the list goes on and on. In this era of modern gaming, we saw a influx of these cuts happening on a daily basis because people needed to meet quotas, or they can show to their board of directors that they are making a profit. What bothers me the most is that in just the first half of this year, roughly five months, into 2024, we've already surpassed the levels of cuts and layoffs than anything we saw in 2023, which is completely mind-numbing in my opinion. And as a fan of gaming in general, it's really disheartening knowing that even when a studio may have a bad slip up where they had a, a turn of events like Redfall, after years of success, it just takes one bad game to ruin their entire future, where their entire dev team was nearly wiped out for one mishap. And then we get to the other end of the spectrum where Hi-Fi Rush was one of the, my favorite games of 2023. One of the games I enjoyed making a review on and really saying its praises, hoping that it would be a game of the year contender because I honestly believe that it should be. Being nominated for several different awards, it's gone. The game that was considered to be Xbox's best game of 2023 is disappearing like it was a crappy game, when we all know that it wasn't. For reaching the levels of Thanos using the Infinity Gauntlet, just snapping his fingers and these layoffs will wipe out the careers of people that were working on these great games, in some cases, troubled. And what makes matters worse is that this is a pretty common trend. This is not necessarily a Microsoft problem. This is a problem that most game companies are going through on their own. And when I look at all these different trends, one thing I think is pretty clear is that this is kind of the changing tides of what the future of gaming is going to look like. All this recent news about the cuts and really the overall messing behind this entire incident is just showing me that the gaming future as a whole is going to look a little bleak. Because I have a feeling this is not just a Microsoft and Phil Spencer is a bad guy thing that most people just want to think. I'll be honest with you, I, I much would rather Phil Spencer just be the evil villain and by getting rid of him, then all of a sudden everything is solved. But I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to throw some cold water on you and tell you that this is a gaming industry problem that happens everywhere. It seems our studios are not being the consumer first companies that you think that they are, and they're only in it for one thing, and that's money. We forget with all this console warring and that my console is better than yours and my plastic box has brighter lights than yours, 
that the simple facts is this. These studios, these publishers are conglomerates. They're corporations. And instead of them giving a damn about your feelings, they're the embodiment of Mr. Krabs and all they want is money. Hello, I like money. You can see massive success, but if it doesn't fit their bottom dollar, then there's a problem. You can have fiscal earnings that are reaching the levels of positive growth. Microsoft's quarter three 2024 fiscal earnings are a great example. Gaming revenue is up 51%, Xbox content and services are up 62%. I mean, damn, that's, that means your games are selling and that Game Pass is doing well. But even that being the case, we see these cuts still happen. But then you see Mars, that's only a Microsoft problem. With the Helldivers 2 fiasco just happening in this past week, we barely just avoided another major problem. Sony wanted to pump up their PSN numbers before the spring sales meeting. And when the PC audience pushed back and said, we're going to get refunds and put bad reviews all over Steam, then all of a sudden they had to backpedal and change their minds. That's why we do get censorship to a certain degree in gaming. That's why we have a, we have to cater to a modern audience in order for it to really make any sales rather than just focusing on the simple fact of just making it fun. These corporates just want to make the money enough so they can fix their investment and they really don't expect much from variation because these major titles will get them the most money possible. I think instead of calling this the era of modern gaming, we need to think of this the era of corpo gaming, where corporations only care about the bottom dollar, that they don't care about your feelings, and they damn sure don't care if you're upset. If you hurt their wallets, that's when they'll step in. These corporations just want to make the money back on their investment, so don't expect much massive titles other than the sole concepts that give them the most money. There won't be a lot of variation. You really won't see many titles like Hi-Fi Rush that break the mold and do something different. All you're going to get are those big name titles that are open world games because they know that those games work. And when I think about the, the silver lining or the bottom line of this entire incident, my takeaway is really two things. Firstly, if you love a franchise or a game, then the simple answer is to buy it and support it. These massive corporations will only support a game as far as it lines their wallets. And we've seen it time and time again that even the most fun games out there will not get a sequel or will lose its content because corporations will kneecap the project if it gets a chance to if it doesn't make its money back. We've seen this multiple times, whether it was Halo Infinite finally getting to the stage it needs to, but it's not making the money that it, at this point with its live service components. Half-Life 3 will never exist because Steam will never invest in a game that doesn't make them millions upon millions of dollars. Banjo-Kazooie will probably never come back because it is a smaller title that even if us grown-ass men remember playing it back when we were kids, it won't make as much money as it should be. And that's why most Sony games are overworld massive titles that follow a very similar formula because that's what people like to play. You won't see a lot of variation or really much changes from what that standard system is because they know that it's safe. So if you find a game that you like and you want to support it, then just buy it and play the game. And secondly, always remember that these major publishers are not your friends. They don't care about your feelings. They are a business. So all aspects of fanboyism and, and devotion to a single plastic box will only hurt you in the long run. There are content creators that constantly cry and talk all this hype about their consoles and their games, and then feed you false information, leading you down a sense of ignorance about what is currently happening with the situation at a time. And then all of a sudden we get a whole group of fan bases that are ignorant or stay in a state of apathy about the current situation of these different titles. It turns into you're a bad guy because you're not on my side. When the reality is, a lot of times these corporations are trying to really nickel and dime you for everything. Whether it's the increase of pricing to $70 with most often these games not getting ported the right way to give us a real clear fidelity. Where this debate about 60 to 30 FPS where in reality all games should be 60 FPS. Or prioritizing certain money systems like live service mainly because it makes them more money not because it actually provides content. When I look at the many sides of the fanboyism, it always makes me laugh knowing that in the long run, most of these fake gamers don't actually buy their games and spend most of the time just talking about them. Do yourself a favor, break the mold. Understand that these publishers are corporations. And the best way to show your appreciation or your hatred towards a practice is to either buy or don't buy a game. And one of the biggest questions that I think most Xbox fans have is, should we trust Microsoft going forward? 
I think the best way to understand this is to really analyze actions rather than just words. As much as I know that Phil Spencer has been the target of a lot of this frustration, which he should be since being the CEO. But the reality is this is a issue that has been widespreading for a while. I think if we're at this point where you look at what Microsoft says and you say, well, I'm not going to believe you until you prove to me that this game or this product is going to reach the certain level that you're promising me. Like when Phil Spencer says that Xbox is not what it is without Halo. And then the next day, they don't really fund much investment into its development in the current game that it has. So I'm one of those people that says, well, I see what you're saying, Phil, but maybe once you prove to me that you are not lying, then I will believe it. I'm not going to say that you should lose all faith in life and that you should sell your Xbox tomorrow because at the end of the day, the bright light at the end of the tunnel tells you that with all these acquisitions and studios that they own, it only seems like there's going to be some games in development, but I'd just be cautious. I won't believe every content creator that tells me that these games are going to be perfect and it's a guaranteed success. The people selling their Xbox Game Pass subscriptions at a protest, I don't know if you're really expecting any change there. If you're expecting Phil Spencer to turn around and hire Tango Gameworks tomorrow, then I'm sorry to tell you that's not going to happen. Hi-Fi Rush probably would have survived the cut if the game reached the level of sales that the corpos over at Microsoft wanted to see. There's a reason why the group that made Forspoken had now been dissolved and forced to join another group developer at Square Enix because it didn't make the sales in which they wanted. As much as it's easy to say that Microsoft is evil and that Phil Spencer is the really the bane of everyone's existence, I really don't care. If Phil Spencer were to leave today or tomorrow, it's not really going to change much. The real answer to the problem is to break down the systematic problem that is present with all these different publishers. Whether it's Microsoft, Sony, or Ubisoft, or many others, there are constant issues that drive these prices up with less real content being pushed out. And you wanna know how I know I'm right? We barely get to see games nowadays that actually reach this next gen of gaming, and it's because these corporations don't wanna dish out the cash to really get us there. They'd much rather us battle each other over these games and consoles when in reality, we should already be getting to 4K60 on the daily. As I close the book on this garbage ass update, there's one thing I just wanna say that's clear is that break the mold, be fans of games and support them. If you like this type of content, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. Do you think that this shows that the future of gaming is headed in the wrong direction? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Until next time, this is Marsman signing off. Peace out guys.